So let's look at these calculations. There's the raw data and some additional data. We're going to be using the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. But if we're trying to find molar mass, that doesn't appear to actually be in the ideal gas law. Ah, well it is. It's hidden in N, which is the number of moles. So as you should know, moles is mass over molar mass. Ah, big M. That's what we're looking for. Rearrange to get big M on one side. Now the data does need a little bit of crunching before we put it into this equation. I need to look at the difference in mass, R and T. Mm, temperature's got to be in Kelvin. Pressure's okay as kilopascals and volume has to be in decimeters cubed. Okay, so let's do some of those conversions and calculations. So the mass of the gas is simply the initial mass minus the final mass. The temperature of the gas, well, you have to use that equation. I'm using two decimal places just to show off that I know it. And so the Kelvin temperature is 299.65 Kelvin. That was the temperature of the gas. And the volume of the gas, well, I'm gonna use the factor label method to convert to decimeters cubed. Chemistry, it's gotta be in decimeters cubed. All right, let's take those three calculations, put them over there, and focus on the ideal gas law. The mass multiplied by the ideal gas constant and the temperature in Kelvin divided by the pressure. It's got to be in kilopascals. We might give it to you in pascals, then you have to convert. And finally, the volume. That comes out at 55.72 grams per mole. Now this equation can be tidied up a lot. That's just the raw basic one. Let's start by trying to look at the uncertainties and significant figures. He looks pretty uncertain. So the uncertainties are the plus minuses parts. It depends on the digital or analog nature of the equipment. Digital, well, it has a digital display. It uses batteries or power. And the uncertainty for a digital machine is plus or minus the smallest division. In this case, a thousandth of a gram. But analog is less uncertain. So the uncertainty is half of the smallest division. And you can see that the thermometer was split up into one degree small divisions. So the uncertainty is plus or minus half a degree centigrade or Kelvin. And for the measuring cylinder, it's also half a milliliter, since the smallest measurement was one milliliter. So I'll do the uncertainties in pink to make it stand out. Since we're subtracting numbers, you add the uncertainties. 0 0.001 and 0 0.001 gives me 0 0.002. I've put the decimal places on those numbers, and the rule is, is that your answer must have the same number of decimal places as that which has the least in the question. So 3dp, 3dp, my answer should also have three decimal places. It does. It's good. Moving down to the temperature. Well, I've only got one uncertainty there. I'm going to carry that through. Now the rule for adding is it has to be with the least DPs, least decimal places. That has one, that has two, but my answer also has two. So that can't be right. It has to have one decimal place, just like the number of decimal places that are least in the question. All right then. Small adjustment made there. And for the volume of gas, that's all good. I've kept my zero. I measured it and it was zero. So I'm gonna keep it. Now what effect does this have on the question? Well, three significant figures, three significant figures, five significant figures, three significant figures. Oh, that's zero, I forgot to put that in. 
make sure I've got that. And three significant figures. The rule for multiplication or division is your answer must have the same number of significant figures as that which is the least in the question. So that would be three significant figures. That two's got to go. So my final answer is 55.7 grams per mole. Still got to deal with those uncertainties though. Now I fixed the significant figures. So if you've got multiplication, you've got to add the percentage uncertainties together. So the percentage uncertainty for the mass of gas is 1%. The percentage uncertainty for the temperature of the gas is 0.2%. That's less important then. And for the volume of gas, the percentage uncertainty is 0.7%. So let's go back to the main ideal gas equation. So I'm going to do this in a bit of an overly complicated way, because it doesn't really like me, frankly. So that was out by 1%. That was out by no percent. Temperature's out by 0.2. Nothing for the pressure. And 0.7 for the volume. Now you have to add them. It looks like that's a mistake, but no, no, no. You have to add the percentage uncertainties. So adding them all up gives me 2%. And like all uncertainties, you only report uncertainties to one significant figure. So my percentage uncertainty, like all uncertainties, one significant figure is 2%. But what is 2% of my actual value? Well, 2% of 55.7 is, to one significant figure, 1. That is my absolute uncertainty. So what's the, uh, what's the most this number could be if all the equipment gave us the maximum uncertainty? So that would be 55.7 plus 1, which is 56.7. So if the actual value falls within that minimum and maximum range, you could blame it on the equipment, the uncertainty of the equipment, because you were good enough that you were within the uncertainty of the equipment. And that would be great. Certainly.